Visitors to the kitchen at Seerby Hall might well notice a scar on the wall by the dresser where a door has been removed. This door once led through to the kitchen pantry and larder. The room has now gone. Only an outside wall and window with its protective bars survive, incorporated into the later structures built onto the back of the house. It is, however, possible to reconstruct how it may have appeared. Had you stepped through the doorway when the house was still a home, you would have found yourself in a square room, about eight feet by eight. This was the pantry, or dry larder, the place where cooked meats, pies, cheese, butter and other perishable goods would be stored. To your left would have been a painted pine cupboard with two doors and most likely above this there would have been two or three tiers of shelves made of slate or marble, the stone acting to cool those foods stored on them. There would have been more shelves on the other walls too. The floor would have been made of stone slabs with a drain to remove excess water. The only other furniture was a pine table and two refrigerators. These refrigerators were little more than insulated cabinets with an internal compartment containing a large block of ice that would keep the contents cool. Looking to your right, you would see a partition wall and door through which you would find a smaller room. This was the wet larder. Here, uncooked meat and game would be kept. This room would have been shelved in much the same way as the pantry, but would have included a stone slab or butcher's block to joint the meat. The room also had a window, but this would have no glass. Instead, a fine wire gauze or mesh would be used to allow a constant flow of air but at the same time keep out insects, dirt and dust. In the age before electric refrigeration, preservation of perishable food was a constant problem. A supply of ice would have been a key to operating the refrigerators. This would have been collected in the winter from ponds on the estate and stored in an ice house, a small, heavily insulated building, often though not always built underground, where stored ice would remain frozen over the course of the year. The Seerby Hall would have had an ice house is certain, but its location is lost. Ice was precious and other methods would be used to preserve perishable foods. Larders and pantries like the one at Seerby were built on the northern facing aspect of a house with external walls where possible. Stone shelves would be used instead of wood and strict cleanliness was maintained. Food containers might be stood in cold water or wrapped in damp cloths. Terracotta food covers would be used that when soaked with water would cool as the water evaporated out of them. Scalding was a common technique for preserving milk and for food that did turn there were recipes for restoring or disguising the taste. Foods might also be processed to preserve them and cooks would spend much of their time pickling, salting and brining food. But by the later 19th century Mrs Henderson the housekeeper cook would have been able to buy a range of foods ready processed and suitable for long term storage as the technology of canning and bottling developed. When the Lloyd Grahams left Seerby Hall in 1934, they sold the contents of the house by auction. Amongst the lots was the furniture from the larder and the two old refrigerators. The pantry and larder had no place in Bridlington Corporation's plans for the hall, and in the subsequent redevelopment of the house, they were lost.